of coming into this world where music is all kind of released digitally as well as physically and I think that there's something still very like magical and attractive about owning LPs I think they have a, a lot more emotional value than most other form, music formats just don't offer it's like the analogue sound like the needle hitting the groove the random crackle and pops and flipping the disc over halfway through it's all like an experience that you really can't get on any other kind of medium and I think it's also very addictive once you start collecting vinyl it's actually very difficult to stop so that's probably why I love vinyl and why my record collection is always always getting bigger Vinyl. It all started really when um, my brother used to bring back vinyl from England, where we lived in uh, the outskirts of Paris. And I can remember him unpacking Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band and me destroying all the cardboard inserts. I remember distinctly when uh, cassettes started appearing on the scene and still preferring records. But I guess at that stage that I started really liking novelty records. And that is a really bad thing. Oh. And now my favorite pastime of all, just browsing. Where shall I start? My name is Rob Messer and I have collected vinyl since I was probably about 12. First record I actually ever bought though myself was My Girl by Madness because I heard it on the radio and I think I saw it in the swap shop actually on the telly and I thought that's really great and I went out and bought it. Then I became a big Madness fan of all their stuff. Uh, vinyl just, I don't know, vinyl just sounds better than CDs, you know, I mean records, they have a warmer sound to them. Um, it's, they're just a great thing to collect, they're good to look at, you know, especially like if you've got album sleeves and there's some amazing album sleeves out there, uh, you know, you, you can't recreate that on a tiny little CD. It's just the thing about it, it's just got a feeling, and there's nothing like going through a box of records and finding that thing you've been looking for for like five, six years, at last I found the copy, you know, it's just a great, great feeling. Come on, vamos, vamos. Hey, vas-y, Bartamas. Hello, my name is uh, Bruno. Um, my DJ name is DJ Ob. The Ob stands for Old Bloke. I'm also part of a duo known as the Shuffle Twins. Trouble is nowadays is you're looking at records that you used to have or used to remember, and that's a real shame because it means you're just playing a nostalgic game. But the real fun is just looking at anything at all and going, let's see, who's this guy? Hmm, wants people to read the lyrics. Who is he? Jill Bandry. Don't recognize any of the musicians. I'd like to listen to that. The other thing, of course, is going around to people's houses and uh, checking out their records. <laughs> oh no, not another copy of Dark Side of the Moon. I uh, had lots of hip records by the time I got to uh, uni, but I also spent a lot of time um, taking them around to people's houses and leaving them there. And I must have lost hundreds of records at different people's houses. There was also the tendency for people to use uh, album covers for uh, rolling joints. There's a great uh, rebel music. I'm looking for rebel music. It's a great compilation.
bit. This is one of the first records I bought. We used to call this uh, Tubular Smells. How much are these records? I think I love We used to go to London, we used to go to Black Market, uh, Unity. Uh, we used to go all around the record shops and the excitement of coming back to Cambridge with a bag full of records that you were about to play for the first time that no one else in the area had was a, was a great, great feeling back then. Uh, so this is my favourite record. This cost me the grand price of 25p off a of car boot sale, this thing. And uh, it's from the Breakdance movie. Uh, brilliant movie, it meant a lot to me as a kid. Uh, it still does, but reminiscing uh, every time I play this record, it's a brilliant record. I mean, I'm, I've always loved vinyl over the years. Have you ever seen my CD collection? It's not very big. <laughs> I don't own a lot of CDs, and most of the CDs I own are uh, recordings of me mixing, so uh, <laughs> I prefer vinyl a lot. The sound, is, the surface sound of a vinyl, you, you don't get that off a CD. You get a surface sound on vinyl, and you get a surface sound in life, really. So, you know, that's, that's how I see it. Mm -mm 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 -mm. No. Where can we go? <laughs> okay. Song of Blood. Viv Feathers. Let's listen to that. The manly art of uh, Jamaican falsetto. Is, it, is there any chance that you could put Song of Blood on with uh, Viv Feathers? Now, I haven't heard this for about 30 years. Listen to the, the voice is really good in this. It's very mannered. That's great. Lightning Hopkins. Uh, penitentiary, lightning, that's it. Oh God, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. Remember Slim, has it got uh, Mother Earth? It has. Yeah. The reason why I love record buying is because you can go into one really, one big long daydream about everything that's involved about the uh, music. And so it's a fantastic distraction. And it's slowly built up. You just, one thing leads to another. And uh, I like the, uh, the flight of fancy and uh, imagination that record buying allows a person to, uh, to, to carry out.